the Living Theatre, yeah. the next generation yeah. of Martha Graham. Yeah. It was uh, in Cunningham. Yeah, yeah, Cunningham and uh, yeah. uh, Carolyn Brown, it was yeah. the younger generation, yeah. and they were completely free. They danced with a, a single chair. Yeah. The person, a chair, and the dance with a chair and a woman. Who did this? Not Grisha. Grisha did that. A woman. It doesn't no, matter. No, he it doesn't matter. No. Steve Pax okay. became the lover of Bob David, David Gordon did this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and all these young people, they yeah. were just unbelievable. And it was all in New York and it happened very often in the churches. The churches gave Judson, us this. Judson, Judson Church, Church gave us the space. You remember Bob Morris carrying the black, the, the grey boards? And, and when yeah. everything was carried away, there was naked Caroline Schneemann right. uh, uh, decorated as Manet uh, breakfast Manet. In, in, in the green. No, it was uh, uh, Manet uh, de, de oh, no, it was, uh, was uh, Monet's uh, Olympia. No, no, Monet, the breakfast no. in the garden. The men no. were dressed. No. It was a, a landscape. And she <laughs> no, but the, the, the woman was lying, lying, lying naked. Lying. Only, on, her only uh, dress yeah. was yeah, with Olympia. The, yeah. the black Olympia. Yeah. It, and, and Manet, what, is it, is it Manet? Manet. Yeah. Manet. 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 <laughs> and that was in the Judson Church. That was great. Everyone, oh, that's great. I was wondering how does Carly Schneemann look like? How does Yvonne Rhino oh, look well, like? Oh, well, is Carly here today? I heard she's she's, she's I just saw her. She is. She's oh, here. She's here. And I saw her back in the show. Oh, okay. She was here? Yes, she's can here. Can, somebody, can you come, somebody show me how she yeah. looks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, looks I wouldn't have recognized you. I know. Would you have recognized me? No. If, no, 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 no. No, we were different. Some people don't change. Some no, people no, I mean, we, we look differently then. <laughs> it, it helped. <laughs> At that time, it helped. We were very beautiful. Don't forget. <laughs> you forget when you get old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so cute. Let's go, Carol. Who's she? Carol Oh, careful. Oh, you fell. Yeah, I fell. Yeah. On your back. Yeah, backwards. Yeah, I was in the hospital for three hours and three hours here. That was surrealist last night. Yeah. Carly Schneemann, I tell you everything about her. She was the Olympia of money in the church. Never forget that. So great to see you. Her beautiful work, the transparent glass pieces at the Dawn Gallery. Unforgettable. So beautiful. This is my gallery. Crystal. She be mentioned now. Yes, you are sure. New Yorkers, yes. the New York girls, and she was one of the the real Fluxus people. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you if you call Fluxus, what it what later happened? Maybe. Macunas but never, never, never let us enter. And didn't accept no, we not enter. We were not enter. We didn't enter the movement because Macunas was pretty arrogant. <laughs> Carol was the first one to use menstrual blood as a medium. Yeah. Okay, Yvonne. Yes. Yeah, now I'm yes. about to use head blood. Is that all over the walkway yeah. there? Were you bleeding? Oh yeah, that's when they get excited when they see yeah. blood. Yeah. There were some great women. There were some great women already in the city. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, we, and we persisted. And the many which are here, which are not even exhibited, like Lee Bond of here isn't here. Right, right. Yes. And so Krisha isn't here. Yeah. And then there was uh, Marisol. Oh, oh right. these oh, great, yes. There's so many great mm -hmm. women yeah. from the yeah. 60s. Yeah. They're not even in the show. Well, there's so many of us, it turns yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah. so she concentrated on the feminist yeah. position. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. why. No. So are you in your wonderful old country house? Are you in your yes. farm? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Rose, I, rose, I, rose, yeah. I raised my four children, uh -huh. so, so to speak. Now I'm free again. Uh -huh. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to be not free and see uh, what they want me to yeah. do. Are yeah, you yes. talking? Yes. yes, me too. Okay, great. Let's okay. Wait. of the feminists because I have four children from three fathers and fed them myself <laughs> <laughs> and I could 
always leave the geniuses of artists' fathers when the, the marriage was over. So I was always on the on the flag of the of the feminist, but I'm not it. a feminist. I love men, but I also <laughs> love women. So, <laughs> so but I was it was the early sixties. Our mothers were the strong generation after war. I come from Germany. Our fathers came home, if they came home from war, they came home as a broken um, generation, disillusioned, they had fought for an ideal which was crazy, which we found out after the war when the concentration camp photo photographs were shown. We had no idea, our fathers had no idea what they were fighting for. So our fathers, our men, were a broken generation. Our women, our mothers were alone, building up the cities, getting the stones uh, scraped away from the cement, building up everything, getting the food, from my 10th to my 14th year of my life, I was only scraping garbage cans of American soldiers for fish bones or for carrot or whatever left or was in my mother made soups. So our mothers were very, very strong and we had no minority complexes as women growing out of that. But we had something else. We were, didn't believe in anything after the war anymore because we were disillusioned. The enemy, we were five years in the bombing shelters and then the enemy walks in. American soldiers, black guy, laughing and throwing candies at us. So as a child, your whole illusion breaks down. This is the enemy, he throws candies at you, then they said, oh, they are poisoned. Then we had to find out if they were really poisoned. They weren't poisoned, so I was the one who had to test them. It was a very risky thing. <laughs> but, then we, we had, but then we didn't tell the other kids that they were not poisoned. So it was, it, it was, it was survival. And every bit of material meant something. Every patch, every, every shoe, we had two different shoes. And everything meant something. So in this kind of spirit, I was growing up. Now our schooling was Bauhaus, abstract art. And that again was something which didn't fit so much what I felt. Because I discovered so many beautiful things in nature or in crafts or whatever, that I just left every art school after two months, one I stayed maximum one year, I left all art schools and said I want to do, I want to learn techniques and to express what I feel. With all that childhood, richness, this richness of horrible memories made me strong. Everything afterwards was beautiful. I am not raging against everything because there's no war. I can drink the water. We have food. It's wonderful, the time. I would never rage or use any energy fighting against something. I was always fighting for something. So after the war, then when we grew up, I was fighting for the communication between artists. I had a great, great studio where musicians and writers and all of them met. I introduced the American school, John Cage, Merce Cunningham, and all of the American artists into my studio in Cologne, and we did the most greatest concerts and happenings there. It was a pre-fluxus time, and that was our revolution, to bring the arts together and to share each other, because nobody else understood us anyway. It was the artists who understood the artists. But in my artwork, I did artwork like this patchwork over there, I was not accepted as, a, as an artist, because this was no art, this was female work. Oh, it's female, it's needlework. If you use material at that time, you're just not an artist, you just, you belong to the knitting department. And as I was always into music and to, into painting, a music critic brought my first score, which I had uh, written in a, in, a, in a composition course, where I had translated the parameters of musical composition into art. So there's a whole concept art of how to translate this. I have a crazy mind. I can hear sounds or smell, uh, a smell of colors. Everything is confused up there. Too long? Okay, okay, <laughs> finished. This piece here is called Needless Needles. It's a word game. It's made from old linen cloths which Sicilian farmer women since centuries repair. They were so poor that they wouldn't throw any bit of material away, so they patched it together.
So can you imagine what these band sheets live through? <laughs> uh, when I got these band sheets, this I made in a hotel room, 1963, <laughs> where I was hidden away as the second wife of my first husband's first wife. We lived in the Minas But the <laughs> society only accepted us when we appeared all three together. My husband was a genius composer, and I appeared earlier. His wife had arrived, so I had to be hidden in the hotel room. And one week, I was on a fast and on water, hidden in the hotel room, until the first wife appeared. I could appear with her and the husband. So, this is all feminist themes. But I was not a feminist, I was just a female in a menage a trois. I don't believe there is a big menage a trois. What you can do, it doesn't work. But we tried hard and we believed in it. We even escaped to America to be away from German society. But in America, the same happened. It doesn't work. What you can reach is a com common, dignified times of suffering together. <laughs> and that is already much. <laughs> That's already much. No? So all this is written into this piece. Let's see what I see here. Little window. Okay, in school we had needlework. At that time, this was not conceived as art. They said, oh, this is female work. It's needlework. It's nothing. It's female matter, material. 30 years later, when men started to make works with cloth, they called it the new sensitivity. So now, now I'm, I'm justified. <laughs> now it's being judged in the context of art because men do it too. As a female, you cannot work with cloth without being put into the needlework department. Here I added this work was exhibited in the Bonino Gallery in New York in '63, and as I didn't step on anybody's foot, the artist loved me. Oh, there she comes, Mary, with completely new work. Leo Castelli loved this work because it was just ready to this. Duchamp had the expression ready made. He took put industrial objects on a, on a pedestal and called it art. So I put uh, things I found and which I found beautiful. I put on the ball. So there are lots of things untouched. Here I did a lot. But there are other pieces where I have just hang a cloth, a shirt or trousers with a lamp in it. It looks just beautiful, the patterns. And nothing touched, only ready to be. And I bought them in this little village where I saw them hanging on the washing, washing lines with the sunshine coming through. And I saw this incredible beauty. And I bought from them a, a bed sheet. I gave them a new bed sheet and 1,000 lira. And they called me the Donna Pazza. She gives us a new sheet <laughs> and she pays thousand lire and she gets our old clothes. And then they brought me all their old clothes, underpants, underpants for men. <laughs> sack like a potato sack. <laughs> Lots of pants. Absolutely beautiful. And I, I, I used them in theater pieces and I used them in performances. And it all has to do, of course, with feminist themes. But it was not typical feminist. It was pre-feminist. It's the 63. We hadn't yet feminism. That happened in New York in the 70s. At 
that time I was at home breeding children. I was back in the German forest. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I owe America my success as an artist. Because my first exhibition was, actually you have to have a whole show to the thing. It's too much, no? No, it's not. No, it's, it's not, not too much. <laughs> exhibition in Amsterdam in the Stedelijk Museum, not through art, uh, um, through artists, but through music, music critic, because I had learned from my later husband, who was a composer, the technique of composing in parameters, which is for scores and music typical. You don't think in a, in a you, you don't have a picture in front of you and paint it out of your belly. Musicians they construct. There's pitch, there's melody, there's rhythm, there's frequencies. And they put it all together and then there comes out an incredible construction which you couldn't imagine uh, audio, audible. And this kind of technique I superposed into painting and I made a composition for artists, for visual artists, which was done the same, parameter, pitch, frame, the space, all of that. And this score was given to the museum director of Amsterdam who said, this is genius. Huh? So he gave me the first show. Not, not my artist uh, galleries. I never had a gallery show. I had never anything. I carried my pictures under my arms and sold them to, to feed my, my other artists in the house. And we had a lot of musicians and we did a lot of music. <laughs> so I had my first exhibition in Amsterdam. The Germans had so much minority complexes after the last war that they would never accept anything <coughs> revolutionary out of their own roles. There were only Bauhaus and everything had to be black, white and, and red and they were completely unsecure, a lost war, we, we, we lost our identity. Now we were young, we were part of the children's and the war generation, we had nothing to do with that, their problems, so we were revolutionaries, but nobody accepted the young German art, unless it was accepted in America and was re-imported to Germany. So in Amsterdam there was a little show, at the same time, American art, there was the goat of Rauschenberg, uh -huh. unbelievable piece of art. Unbelievable. And said, when well, this is called art, I have to be. <laughs> so I went to the director, I said, please sell, buy a picture. I have to be there where this is called art because I would know I would be there with open arm accepted. And that happened. He bought a picture, I got, a, I got my ticket, I went to America and I was uh, welcomed with open arms in America because the Americans don't have the problem that they constantly compare their pieces with the masters. The Americans are very innocent. They, they, they judge the creativity of a young artist. We in Europe, oh, there's Leonardo, and there's, there are all these incredible masters, and you always compare yourself with this. You can never compete. So the freedom of American art, and why this was such a revolution in the 60s, but they were free to judge new. And the whole new movement, the pop art, the concept art, all was coming in America. And I was there in the 60s, I lived in New York, it was absolutely great. This is the end of my, my guide. <laughs> Prioritäten. Mhm. Und deshalb habe ich das mit dem Krieg gesagt. Ne? Ja, ja. Wenn du im Krieg groß bist, dann ist alles heute wunderbar. Und du hast ja auch gewonnen, weil du ja gesagt hast, ja. dass, du dann, dass die Amerikaner ja. äh, letztlich dann die moderne Kunst verstanden, verstehen konnten und ja. nicht darunter leiden, was die Meister hervorgebracht haben. Ich immer, immer diesen pausenlosen Vergleich mit den Meisterwerken, das ja. ist ja so komplex. Ne?
Schönberg war hier. Ähm, die ganze Frankfurter Schule ja. hat sich hier ja. getroffen und hier den Plot ja. für nach der Nachkriegszeit ausgehandelt. Genau. Genau. Ne? Ja, ja. Wie werden wir Deutschland re-educaten? Ja. Ne? Ja. Ja. Und die waren dann in Frankfurt wirksam. Ja. Unsere Studentenbewegung war eine Schreibtischbewegung. Mhm. Mhm. Im Gegensatz zu Kalifornien. Die kalifornische ja. Hippie-Bewegung hat was bewegt, ja. hat die Universitäten geändert, mhm. hat im Hinterland Land gehabt, hat, hat etwas verwirklicht in der Community. Bei uns nicht. Das waren alles Schreibtischsachen. Mhm. Ich hatte kein Land. Es war kein Land, wo sie die Ideen verwirklichen konnten. Mhm. War das alles Schreibtisch. Und dann kam mhm. entsprechend die terroristischen Akte. Ja. Ja. Right. Das entstand aus diesem Nichts tun können, weil mhm. kein Land da war. Ja. Und hier verflüchtigte sich das in die Berge. Mhm. Ich habe in Sausalito ein halbes Jahr gelebt. Das war grandios, 67. Das war das. War das ja, yeah. die Berge waren voller mm. Hippies, die dann die, 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 die neue Welt, Welt County. Ja, die, 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 neue, die neue Weltordnung diskutierten, mm -hmm. aber, aber liebevoll. Ja, und das ist eigentlich ein sehr schönes Park und sehr ruhig. Mm -hmm. und, und sind die noch, sind die noch da? Ja? Ja. Uh, uh, well, Jürgen Anders. Nein, ja, natürlich nicht, <lacht> aber ich meine, es ist eine Schule. Ja, das ist alles noch da. Mm -hmm. Und es ist auch für die Öffentlichkeit. Oh, ja. Und Und ähm, also man, es gibt keinen besten Blick. Vielleicht hier ja, ja, das ist doch schön. So was jetzt mal zu erleben. Ja, ne? Was sind hier? Aber es ist wirklich, ich sehe was völlig anderes heute hier als damals. Mhm. Der hat das Ding ja weggeschmissen. Hm? 